Right. So if you're coming into the Nuki 11 series from any uh, version prior to that, you're going to find a new lens distortion node. So if I pull open the lens distortion node here, show you what this looks like. I'm going to pop that on there for now. I'm also going to call in uh, at the older lens distortion node as well, so we can put these side by side, really get an idea of what's changed. So just, you can see right here, right off the bat, that a few less tabs, a few less knobs. If I go through this, you can see there's a lot of stuff that you kind of had to set up or go through, depending on what you're working with. Now it's all been kind of consolidated. A couple of the big things with the Nuke 11 um, version of the lens distortion, or I should say Nuke 11 X, this is an X only uh, feature, is that it's now GPU accelerated and it offers uh, multiple keyframes that can be analyzed over time. So if you have some, you know, footage that changes a little bit, you can try to analyze multiple keyframes of it and get a much better result as far as uh, undistorting your footage. Okay, so if we just go over some of these things and maybe where they're placed now, if we look at output image, it's like image type um, or displacement. So this has been moved down to output over here. So now you have the option of ST map, uh, undistort or redistort, lens type, uh, spherical and anamorphic on the old one. Now the new one also offers a beam splitter. We also have a uh, Projection models you can load in here as well. So if you're using a, for like a rectilinear lens or fisheye lens for the VR stuff. And then we have some dis distortion model presets that you can use as well. So we got car VR, 3D equalizer, and then any kind of custom one you might want to put in yourself down here and mess with these things. I don't usually mess with these things, but they're there if you need them. If we go to image analysis here grid analysis, line analysis, all of this now happens in one area here for the analysis section. So all this has been consolidated down into the here basically. Uh, for these options, if you wanna have options, there is basically the grid detection options right here to change those settings to for more refinement. So I'm gonna close this out real fast and we'll get started on actually doing a lens distortion solve here. Starting off, what grids is doing is, and if you hover over this, you'll get the tooltip that's going to tell you the same thing. This is basically analyzing the features and the links of the lines that it detects. So usually if you're shooting something, you want to shoot a grid first, like a checkerboard grid with the lens that you're using, because it's going to make your um, lens on distortion a lot um, more accurate and easier to do. But in this case, I just shot some footage real quick for this example. I don't have a checkerboard grid that I shot, but I still want to undistort this footage that I'm working with. So what I can do is if I'm just going to features and detect features, and it's just going to show me some features that um, Nuke is going to pick up on. Let me just put that back in my properties panel so I can make this larger. So it's just going to detect features uh, within the footage here for me automatically. And these features are also can be detected here as well and adjusted. If you need more features for it to detect, increase it. You can hit detect features again. It's not going to automatically change. Same thing for any of these um, settings. Anytime you make a change here, you're going to have to hit detect for it to actually update for you. So feature separation, you know, if you want to separate more of these features, really spread them out. It's kind of like a patch size area here just increase this number, so it's like density. So the more separation, the less dense it's gonna be. You can see there it's changed. If I bring this back down to say 10, detect, fills in more features, it's denser, denser detections there. The threshold here, you can see it's gonna increase the value to make it weaker features. So um, features that don't, don't really hold up over time, you can kind of filter those out by increasing the detection threshold. So if I turn this up, say to like 300, I won't go 500, detect, it's, these are the strongest points here that as we can see, because it's holding up on the detection threshold, you know, accordingly to your footage, Every, all the footage can be different from one another. So I'm really, really just need these for the lines. So I don't really need it for all the trees here because I'm, I'm going to try to get some straighter lines out of this. All right. So you'll notice when I go back into here, I can't really solve for it because all this is doing at this point is just detecting features for me. Um, I can go to links 
detect links and it's going to try to draw lines between these points of what it thinks should be a straight line. So let's see what happens here. We detect links. You can see it drew a few lines here. Now you'll need at least four lines to be able to uh, start a solve or create a solve. And these links can also be adjusted here as far as their thresholds, um, their peaks, like you see these little, if we find one with a peak on here, these little peaks here, how much you want it to deviate from a straight line kind of thing, the threshold on that, the angle threshold at which these are, are gonna angle off, that can all be adjusted there. And then you can try to solve from this. I'll, so I'll do a solve. It's not going to be a very good solve because I'm not really seeing any straight lines here. All right. Anything that's okay. So we'll solve though. See what we get out of that. So it's solved. I'm not seeing anything other than these green lines. But if I want to see what my actual understore looks like, I change this to understore. And it kind of messed up like that because it was just a bad solve. So I'm going to reset that back to normal. We could try the grid the grid detection, but all that's really doing is just the same thing we did previously as far as detecting features, detecting lines, and then um, using that information to try to solve. So what I'm gonna do instead is create my own lines. I can go to this little button here um, and then start drawing, dropping down some points of what I know is a straight line. These are actually palm trees, but it wasn't really windy this day, so they shouldn't be bent over like this. They should actually be straight. So I'm telling um, Nuke that this should be a straight line. When I'm done with my line, I press enter on the keyboard to start drawing another line. And do it right here as well. Just something that's easy to follow. And that you know to be a straight line. Okay, that's good. So that's only three lines. See, I still don't have the ability to solve yet because I need four lines to do that. And maybe I'll do uh, this line over here. This looks like another tree. All right. And rather than just doing a vertical line, I can also do a horizontal line. And I'll, I'll do a horizontal line across here. And you notice as soon as I do that, I have the ability to solve now. So I can adjust these points here. This, this should be a straight line here. So maybe I'll draw a line here as well. Oops. That's what happens when I don't press enter after I enter my line. So now I can go ahead and do a straight line here. Enter. All right, let's go back to here. And then now I have my lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve. Solved, all the lines look good. So now I can just change this to undistort. It's going to undistort my footage for me. Perfect. That's what I want to see. I'm seeing some straight lines now, straight poles. But what I'm not seeing is all of my footage outside of this area. So what I have to do is I actually have to have a bigger format size. So if I reformat this to something bigger than my actual footage size, I'll just go, um, okay, 8K lat long. That should get everything in there. You'll see now my entire footage, or most of it, has been undistorted. These are the results here. What I could do at this point is I can just throw a crop down if I want to crop into this. And then just really use the usable footage. Something like that. And then make sure that's reformatted to the crop size. There we go. Something like that. All right. Now notice there's still kind of a slant on this. You can go into... Um, your lens distortion settings again, and then change it probably based off of like these little settings here. This is going to adjust the amount of warp. You can see how if I may change this back and try this one. Same thing. And then this is going to be the center point. So you can just really just play with these, try to get it to, to what you want it to look like. I'm gonna try to get this go straight up and down. Maybe something like that. Went from this distortion to this solve here. You can see the straighter lines. So it's some pretty big distortion I had on it. That's why we're losing a lot of our 
original footage, but now it's all straight, straight on there. All right, so once you have that undistorted information, you can actually, if I just take and copy this, let me do this over here, use it to distort other images, footage, or whatever, whatever you need to do. So what I'm going to do is, uh, with this one, I'm going to set it to ST map, and I'll just throw a checkerboard on here, connect it to that. Now if I look through it, you're not really going to see anything happen here, so I need to add an ST uh, map node here. So this will be my ST map now, and this will be my source. If I view through that, okay, still not what I want to see. I have to actually change my UV channels over to motion because these are motion. Um, there we go. So now we have um, the distortion, the lens distortion from our footage here being applied to our checkerboard through the ST map.